Hola a todos. Hi guys, how are you doing? Hope you're all doing okay. Um, I'm back again with the second instalment of the Spanish Round the World Tour. Um, I've been given some feedback by my husband. He said it was quite scary when I was filming my face because it was a bit up close. So I'm going to try something a bit different today so it's not as intense. Uh, so today we're going to be learning about um, the really famous picture called Guernica which was painted by Pablo Picasso and I'm going to give you a little bit of background as to why it was painted and then I'll set you a little task at the end okay so if you wait a second I'm gonna do the next part of the video all right so here we've got some keywords that we're going to talk about in this uh presentation so i've got the nationalists republicans cubism perspective and mood and i'm going to be talking to you about what they mean as we go through so we did this yesterday can anyone point out where spain is please good so spain's the, the yellow country it's bordered by france on one side and portugal down the side and that's us at the top uh the uk so during 1936 to 1939, Spain, what had, there was a massive civil war going on in Spain. A civil war is a war that happens between the, say, the people from the same country. So basically, one group of people with similar views were fighting against another group of people with similar views. So in this respect, in this case, it was the Republicans versus the Nationalists. The Nationalists were people who supported the church, who supported the army, who supported the monarchy. So the monarchy is the king and the queen. Uh, Spain still got a king uh, to this day. And people who were part of the fascist party or the phalange. And the Republicans were all the people down this list. Um, and they basically anyone who wasn't in the Nationalists. So they were the two groups of people who were fighting each other. So at the start of the Civil War, or during most of the Civil War, it was actually this group of people who were in power. Um, but when the Nationalist, was taken, Nationalist Party was taken over by Francisco Franco in 1936, he was able, able, able to lead the Nationalist Party to victory in, at the end of the Civil War in 1939. And he took absolute power. So he was a dictator. A dictator is someone who doesn't allow anyone to have any have the, allowed the people of his country to have any real opinions he didn't allow them to um vote if anyone had disagreed with them he would execute them so he led the power the party the nationalist party to power in 1939 the civil war was really bloody and 50,000 people died during the war in a three-year period and in a population, Spain only had 25 million people living there at that point. So what I'd like you to do is work out how many people, what percentage or what proportion of the country was killed during the Civil War. So there was 50,000 people died and 25 million people. How many zeros does a million have on the end? Yep, good, it's got six zeros. So... Try and work out what proportion or what percentage. I'll give you a few minutes to work it out. Yeah, good. So one fiftieth of the world's population of the Spanish population was killed during the Civil War. And again, during the first year of Franco's um dictatorship, so following 1939 onwards, in the first few years. 50,000 people were executed for not following and not um, agreeing or disagreeing with the way that he was ruling the country. So it was quite scary, I would imagine, being part, being living in Spain at that time. So, as you can see, this is a map of Spain. The red dot is a village called Guernica, and Guernica is part of an, a county or an area called the Basque Country. So the Basque, even to this day, want to be independent from the rest of Spain. They want to have their own independence and they want to be their own country. Um, but during the Civil War, um, uh, Franco wanted to take control of this area because at that point it wasn't in control. It wasn't, there was, his power, his party, sorry, wasn't in control of this particular area. So he was trying to think of his best way, the best way to... 
to be able to seize it. So what he did was he got in touch with two men who lived across Europe who held similar views to him. And these were the two men. So the gentleman on the right is Hitler from Nazi Germany. And the gentleman on the right, on the left, sorry, is Mussolini. And he was the leader of Italy and he was a fascist. So they all had very similar views. And Franco wanted to enlist Hitler and Mussolini to help him to gain control of this particular area in Spain because he knew if he won that area, then he would be able to take more control of Spain and he would eventually win the Civil War. Win the Civil War. So he asked Mussolini and Hitler to bomb the village of Guernica, okay? And that's exactly what they did. So on 26th of April, 1937, the... Uh, Air Force from Germany and the Air Force from Italy spent three hours bombing this village. This village, it was the market day for this village. So there was approximately 10,000 people in the village at that point. Uh, and he knew that. So he sent those bombs, those planes over knowing that he was going to make as much damage as possible, hoping that if he wiped out some of the people who didn't support him, it would be easier for him to take control of the area. And that's what he did. And as you can see, there's that picture in the picture before. That was the devastation that was left. Okay. And that's a picture of this tree. It was one of the only things that was left standing after the bombing. And it lived until 2003. And unfortunately, in 2003, um, it died because it was too hot. The weather had gotten to it. So, um, the government, before the Civil War was over, the government at the time asked Mr. Picasso, Pablo Picasso, a Spanish artist, to create a mural depicting the atrocities or the terrible things that Franco, Francisco Franco was doing. And, pa and Picasso didn't have any particular ideas, but then once the bombings happened, he decided he was going to do his mural about the bombing. And Picasso was particularly famous for his Cubist style, uh, it was pioneered by Picasso and it aimed to show every possible perspective of a personal thing. So they're both people. And as you can see, they look particularly flat. You can see both eyes. You can see the nose. You can see the mouth and you can see it in full view. Same on the right hand side. They're quite unusual looking, but it's showing you exactly what the image looked like. So I'm going to show you a picture of Guernica that he painted following the atrocities, the bombings that took place. So there we go. That is the picture that he created, the mural. It's a huge mural. Um, I think it's 35 foot long. And it was painted in Paris because Picasso left Spain because he was, he didn't agree with what was going on there and he never returned. So he created this mural in Paris and then it went on a tour around the world and it ended up spending quite a lot of time in New York because Picasso said, I don't want it to go back to Spain until Spain is back, is not in a dictatorship anymore. So there we go. That's the painting. It's called Guernica. As you can see, it, it's quite, it, the feelings that I get from this picture is that it's quite haunting. Um, the way the, he uses colour and some of the images. So if you look at this bit here, you can see that this is a woman and she's, her head is tilted up towards the sky and it looks like she's screaming. And if you look further down, you can see that she's holding her baby and the baby looks to be dead. So you can really feel how this woman is feeling during, um, during the bombing. Again, if you look on the right hand side over here, you can see this person appears to be trying to get away from whatever is happening. This person here is screaming and it looks underneath like there's some flames. So perhaps they've been caught up in the bombing. It's said that this person here is holding a light and that light represents hope. And you can see this. Um, it looks like a light. It looks like a flash. And it's said to represent the modern warfare so the fact that during war in this period they were starting to use plane and to start and start bombing so it looks like a flashlight like it's been like a bomb's been dropped and it's the light that's been uh that's set off been set off from the bomb and you can see that there's two animals there okay you can see the bull here 
and you can see the horse here. They're both animals that are um, that are representative of Spain. So they, whenever you think of Spain, you might see a picture of a bull and you might think of like the bullfights, the bull rings that you might have seen. And horses are also particularly common imagery around Spain. Okay, so this might represent the Spanish people or the Spanish na nationality. All right then, so. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed that whistle stop tour of um, a little bit of Spanish history and a little bit of art. Um, what I'd love you to do is think about the mood of the picture. So the mood means how the artist has created a certain atmosphere or feeling. So looking at Guernica, what has Picasso used or done to make you feel a certain way? So has he used colour in a particular way? Has he used shapes in a particular way? Has Is his style, does that make you feel a particular thing? So for example, he is a pioneer of cubism. Cubism is, what you can see from all of the images that I showed you, it looks like he's got, he's flattened everyone down. So it doesn't look real. It doesn't look like a 3D. It looks like he's like taking a scan of the whole of the head and then he's just put it all down onto one flat sheet. What does that style make you feel when you look at Guernica? Does it look a little bit scary? Does it look a little bit eerie? Does it look realistic? Um, what sort of emotions has he put onto that image, into the into the mural? And also think about if he'd used colour, how would that have affected the way that the image comes across? You can do that by either recording yourself. You can just record yourself on your phone and send it to us and just tell us what you think about it. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you think it's scary? Do you think you could do a better job? Uh, you can write it down, you can email it to me, um, write it down by paper and then you can either take a picture of it and send it to me or you can keep it until we're back into school next week. And then finally, I'd love you to tell me um, or love you to have a go at doing your own piece of Cubist art, okay? Have a look online, do some research on your phone if you can or on your computer if you've got one. Have a look at other bits of work and uh, yeah, I'd love to see what you're up to because I'm really missing you all. So adios, everyone.